I'm Candy Law, and I'd like to thank you for inviting me here. I'm an artist that works across several mediums, drawing, especially the figure. I love drawing the figure. I also do printmaking, even some kinds of photography. But something I keep coming back to is encaustic. It was suggested I might talk about this and show you a little more about how to do it. Encaustic is a hot wax medium. It is paint that is heated, applied to a surface while it's still hot, and then fused with heat to the layers beneath. I'd like to give you just a little bit about the history of this medium. The word encaustic comes from a Greek word meaning to burn in. We read about the ancient Greeks using hot wax in their shipbuilding. They used it to caulk and waterproof for their vessels. And that would be about some 3,000 years ago or more. But the best examples of encaustic were discovered in the Egyptian desert in the 1880s. The Fayum portraits, which are life-sized head and shoulder paintings, were found in burial chambers, painted on wood panels, and embedded into mummy cases. Over 600 items have been excavated so far, incredibly preserved. The first that I'm going to show you is the funeral portrait of a bearded man. You can see how realistic the painting was done then. Next is a mummy with inserted panel portrait of a youth. These were often commissioned while the person was still alive to have their likeness painted, and then the panels were used after they died. This is Portrait of a Boy. We know his name. It's not, a, it's not a name that I can pronounce, but it's one I find rather poignant. What little I've read about him, he was born as a slave and then later was freed, but shortly after that he died, and this work was commissioned by his former master. This last one is Portrait of a Young Woman with a Gold Wreath. This one is more impressionistic, and it is suggestive that perhaps it was not painted while she was still alive, but in fact after she had died. Over time, encaustic has been in and out of favor until modern times. Several notable artists experimented with wax, such as Gauguin, Seurat, even Diego Rivera did some mural work, as well as easel paintings in wax. But the person I think was most responsible for the resurgence of this medium was Jasper Johns. He began working with it in the 1950s along with other abstract expressionists and was one of the first to build a body of work in encaustic. This first piece is Flag by Jasper Johns, one of his iconic pieces. This is a detail from the Flag piece you can see the wax as it runs down. Jasper tended to work on his pieces vertically, which is different than a lot of the artists that I know or the way that I work personally. So that's what's causing those drips. You can also see that he embedded newspaper under the wax. This is Green Target. It is one of his Target series. This is figure five from his figure series, and those brown spots will be newspaper that's, again, embedded underneath the wax. Okay, I don't know what to say about this one. This is encaustic, but the title between the clock and the bed, I have no idea what that means. But I like the piece, and so I wanted to share it with you. Now, I've been using some of these terms interchangeably, and what do they mean specifically? Well, wax, this is the primary material of encaustic, and it's what gives the medium its unique characteristics. I use beeswax in my work, and it's the most common, but other kinds are also used, such as microcrystalline, paraffin, even soy wax. Medium is made of beeswax, or one of the other waxes that I just mentioned, and a little bit of Damar resin, which is added to give it some hardness. The Damar also raises the melting point of the wax mixture. 
Encaustic is your wax plus the hardener plus the pigment. Next up is a video I've made to show you working with encaustic. I talk about the materials and equipment I use and then work a piece in a basic, traditional manner. After that, I demonstrate a couple other techniques that are easy to do with wax. You'll see from my studio setup, it can be difficult for everyone to see what is being done on a tabletop, so I hope this will give you all a good view. So just sit back and enjoy me doing the work. I'm going to finish up my presentation by showing some work of contemporary artists, local and national, that I find inspiring. This first artist is Chris McCauley. She is a Pontiac artist and she's one of the first people I've met that works in encaustic. I took a class from her and I think that woman is probably one of the most incredible artists I've ever met. Her work tends to be very representational as you can see by this piece Abandoned Hatchery 1. Part of her early work has also been doing portraits of people. And you can see from this how well she manipulates the medium. This is Lori. Loretta Miles is an artist from Petoskey and she's a good friend of mine. She and I came to Encaustic at about the same time. We both took a class from Chris McCauley. This piece, Glorious End, is a little more impressionistic than some other artists. And this was painted actually off her balcony in Petoskey. This piece, New Beginning, was also painted um, a view from her house. Linda Cole is an artist from the Ann Arbor area and is very abstract in her work. She's a member of Washington Street Gallery, so if you're ever in the Ann Arbor area, do stop in, and she will always have some of her work hanging there. She tends to be very abstract and really push the limits of what the medium can do. She works on board, like many of us, but she also works on plexiglass, on acetate. Uh, she does installations, just a wide variety. This piece, Sumi Pan, is one of her newer pieces in her more current body of work, working with Sumi Ink. Grace Ann Warren is also an artist from around the Ann Arbor area, and she also shows nationally. She's represented by the River Gallery in Chelsea. If you ever have a chance to stop in there, she usually has one or two pieces hanging in their second story. She is an interesting artist. She works abstractly, but she likes embedding words and materials under the top layers and then obliterating part of it out as part of the texture and mark making. This is Red Lorena. In this piece, Jargon, you can see again where she has incorporated mark making and then obliterated part of it to add texture to her encaustic. This is Alan Soffer. He's from Pennsylvania. I don't know a lot about him other than he is a dentist and does his art part-time. I came across his work through the Robert Jen Twice Weekly Newsletters. You see an awful lot of good artists through that. But I like his work. This is another piece, Microcosm 1 by Alan Soffer. And you can see in it how he has incorporated images and layered on and layered above them. He has either embedded these images or done some kind of transfer. Betsy Eby is from Maine. This is one of her works from her earlier body. It is these gray lines that you see are either fabric or paper that she has burned and let the ashes fall down onto the work and then put wax on them. So she's layered them. It's really cool stuff. This is another piece from that same body of work where she's been layering ashes. I've only recently come across Audrey Phillips' work 
and have been really quite taken with it. You can see in this unsure of the weather piece again how she's layering images. Some of these are either embedded or transferred and I see some mark making as well as some other painting in it. Wonderful sense of depth. This is another piece by Audrey. Again that same layering of images and colors. This last artist, Daniela Wolf, is one of my favorite. She tends to take paper, that can be paper from her diary, paper from books that she finds, note cards, any kind of thing, and she shreds them. Then she takes those shreddings and reassembles them, often sewing them, together into these long snake-like things. In this piece, Spine Tail, she has incorporated that on a panel into her encaustic. She then sometimes takes her shreddings, she sews them together into these long strips, dips them into wax, and then hangs them from the ceiling as an installation, as this installation detail shows. Um, this particular piece fills the better part of a small room that you can walk through or walk around. Uh, it creates a really interesting space. That completes my presentation, and I'd like to thank you for being such a fun group to talk with.